From sunny Southern California, this is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. This is a big picture overview about training. Gonna hit some details, gonna hit some big picture. It's all gonna mix and come together nicely. Now you love housekeeping. It's an art form and you know it. The executive housekeeper knows it. As the executive housekeeper, you are the number one guy on campus. It's the executive housekeeper that handles the most important fabric of the largest staff. You handle the biggest budget, Oh yeah. And you manage the greatest impact on the guest. Remember, we're doing something to them, not for them. This is a different kind of thinking. I'm sorry, front desk. I'm sorry, engineering. Oops, food and beverage. Mm. But the housekeeping department is the biggest house on the hill. Okay, I'm gonna come at you really fast. It's going to be very content rich. And I know you like that. I'm going to discuss your standard operating procedures, your SOPs. I'm going to touch on your profit and loss statement, your P&L. And all of this is going to be all centered around the, the whole subject of training. And you, you've got to know your P&L so you can budget and use your training budget wisely. Now, a little caveat. This is, let me go gentle with you and handle you with little kit gloves. If your company, if your general manager, if your comptroller, if whoever does not allow you to get the profits and loss statement, the P&L, once a month from the previous month to keep you up to date, you know, month to date, quarter to date, year to date, if you don't get a copy of your P&L every month to see how you performed financially and in terms of productivity, just bear with me. You're not a manager. You can be called many things, supervisor, Maybe even just a, just a sophisticated babysitter, but you're not a manager. Managers manage money. The management of housekeeping is the management of the resources that you have that pay for the production of a product that you bring forth. Any company that doesn't allow me to see the P&L has already handicapped me. I'm handicapped because now they can tell me how to do what I do because they're making the decisions on what I do based on what? Money. And if I'm not in control of that, if I'm not making my decisions, then I'm always following them as to where to go and what to do. Why? They hold the purse strings. So just understand that as you have a career as the executive housekeeper, and you can still be an executive housekeeper and not handle the money, but you're not a manager. I'm just, ooh, just saying. Okay, standard operating procedures, p &L, I mentioned those two, and then at the end here, I'm gonna to touch on how to organize certain key training aspects in your department. I'm gonna talk about training scheduling, how to understand what your budget is, how to use your budget, where to use your budget, how to bring in an employee and set them on a schedule for three or four days to get them underway, to the end that we put on a big show that we entertain people with a product. I love being the executive housekeeper. Hoorah! I remember one time I went to work for a hotel and they threw me to the wolves. I call it being thrown to the wolves. Here, follow Pedro around, follow Rick around, follow Steve around. You know, and you look up after 20 minutes of your first day and Rick and Pedro and Steve, pew, they're gone. Then you feel like, hey, where am I? What am I doing? Okay, now I've gotta go and uh, where'd he go? Ah, hmm. That's not training, that's cruel. Training is totally managed by, manipulated by, engineered by, organized by, executed by the executive housekeeper. As the executive housekeeper, you're going to put your hands on that person that you're training and you personally are going to be their mentor, their instructor, if you will, their father figure. You're going to be their safety net. You're going to be their very best friend. You're going to be their confidant. You're not gonna follow them around, but you're going to be their go-to for communication, for relief, for conversation to be able to express their experience. Trainees need to express their experience. It can be rewarding and uh, encouraging to train, be trained. It can also be discouraging and humiliating and frustrating while you're in the training process. You're going to gather them in every single day at the end of their day and huddle and have a little powwow. And you're gonna check into them and be the person they can talk to so they don't have to worry about offending the person that's working with them. So if they have a complaint, they can voice it, blah, 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 blah. 
you get it. Okay, this is a standard operating procedure or SOP, SOP notebook, right? This has all my standard operating procedures written down duty by duty in a brief and organized manner. We'll get to that. Drop. Okay, just like you document your standard operating procedures, right? You, you have to document the training of the standard operating procedures, duty by duty, function by function. And it's if you don't have this underway, yeah, it's going to be a process you're gonna walk through for maybe a month until you get everything into the hands of the staff and employees, right? That comes from the book, but they have to sign off on everything in the book, but you can't do it all at once. They just can't take it in, nor could I, nor could you. So life good, we'll get there. I'm not going to turn you into a librarian or the courthouse, but I'm gonna lay some foundation as to how you need to have your office organized for training, for training. Oh my God, if you want the product, you've got to train. And it's so easy. First of all, you've got to have a file system in your office. Just takes a standard tradition, traditional all-American filing cabinet. Now, I know everybody wants to go digital. Don't go digital with this because you've got to have signatures. So you've got to have paper, just like old school. So set up a file and in the filing cabinet, you have a file for every single employee in your department. And as employees come in, you make a new file for them and that's where all their little papers are kept. And when employees are removed from your department for whatever reason, they voluntarily or involuntarily uh, leave the job, you'll move that file out and you'll put it somewhere, give it to HR or whatever it is. If you keep this filing system in your office and you maintain it, human resources will love you. They will fall in love with you. Angels will sing, harps will play a file system for your employees. If you will do what everybody just automatically thinks HR should do, you won't have to go and bother them. Can you pull this? Can I see this? Okay, the standard operating procedure notebook. In here, this is your Bible. This is everything for every position. And it's not 700 things you've got to deal with. So each position has really five or six basic things that are specifically uh, important to that position. But in general, everybody in here follows the same stuff. Sign in, scheduling, uniforms, breaks, all the just the standard stuff that applies to everybody. So a lot of times when you think about creating one of these, you think, oh my God, I've got to write down everything we do. Well, most of it, you write it down once, it applies to everybody. Then you have specific things that you expect. And the beautiful thing about standard operating procedure notebook is that you can change it. When you change your procedure, you put in a new procedure in here and you, and I'll talk about this here in a minute, then you document, document that training with everybody on your staff, individually or as a group. I'll get into more of that. You can add procedures, you can remove procedures, the notebook. Now, all training is documented in writing. That way, nobody can say, oh, I did not understand, or oh, you didn't tell me. Margaret said this, but Frank said that, and then the general manager came and he told me, and blah, 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 blah. One voice from you, the executive housekeeper, SOP notebook. The standard operating procedures document the disciplines, listen to me, it documents the disciplines of your housekeeping department. It is a discipline. We are disciplined in everything that we do. And we practice this discipline no matter what, whether we're slow or we're busy. It doesn't matter. You operate the same way every single day. Listen to me. Executive housekeepers don't manage the department. General managers don't manage the hotel. Food and beverage managers do not manage the food and beverage area. Chief engineers do not manage the engineering of the chief. No, procedures, standards of operation, best practices, systems manage the hotel. That way, if you're a company, it doesn't matter what manager you have in there. They just follow the systems. The systems are in place. Now it doesn't matter. Anybody can come and go. You have a successful hotel because you have systems. Systems manage the hotel, not the general manager, not you, not me. Predetermined systems of operation, procedures, guidelines. If you run your department on verbal commands, then the department will run you on verbal demands. We don't train people 
passing down the hallway. Oh, don't forget to do this. We don't train people by going into the guest room and saying, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. Put it down in writing so that any human being can read it to admit that they understand it and then sign their name because that becomes the first write up. That becomes the foundation for all coaching and counseling. Uh, a staff member is, you know, missed the mark a little bit. Let's bring them back in. Look, remember this when we trained you on this? Let me read you to this again. Let me bring out our coaching and counseling. All right, never call it a write up. Never call it actually, I'll give it, give it to you. Never call it coaching and counseling. Get rid of all those old school cliche buzz phrases. It's a documentation of a conversation. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna document a conversation. Can you see me in my office at the end of the day? I want to document a conversation. Can you come by uh, after lunch? I've got a couple of things I wanna talk to you about and I wanna document that conversation. Do you see how changing script changes how the mind sees it? Changes the reaction an employee receives from what you've said? Uh, bring somebody in, we're gonna write them up. Man, whoosh, whoosh. Change your vocabulary, change your speech. Language is everything. Script is everything. When it comes time for you to reach the difficult yet permanent decision to terminate an employee, it all begins on your standard operating procedure uh, on a particular issue where they have read the instructions and signed off on them. And I'll explain how to do all that. It begins with your training in writing. It's your first documented conversation about their responsibilities first. You say, well, I only need three and I can terminate somebody. You already got one. Training is your first one. Now, two more conversations you document about shortcomings. There's your three. Smart. Two ways to document conversation, one-on-one or as a group. All right. So in the morning, I have a stand-up meeting with all the room attendants. I have everybody there. Houseman, room attendants, la laundry, Everybody on staff gathers around in a circle first thing in the morning in housekeeping, right? Nobody's exempt. Sometimes you need them to be exempt. Okay. Sometimes you're going to cover things and you know what? Housemen are good. They're busy. Go on. But they come to the meeting first to be dismissed from the meeting. Okay, training. In the morning, we have a procedure that we're all going to follow and be trained on. I'm going to read to you the procedure. I'm going to hand each of you an explanation in writing of the procedure. And while you stand here, while we discuss it, you're going to sign your name. That way I get 12 or 13 signatures right there. If somebody's off, the next day they come in, I just sit down with them, with a the supervisor, and we review the training. They sign off on it. And remember that file cabinet I told you to build? Stick it in everybody's file respectively. Now you got your documentation of training. Now there's no he said, she said. All training is documented, every single aspect of it, no matter whether it's complex or detailed or simple and just a no-brainer, no matter whether they already know that or not. I guarantee you, you're going to be happy someday when you have an issue to resolve with somebody and you have some of the most basic stuff in writing. Oh, I can't stress this enough. Documentation, training, you know, coaching and counseling, even verbal conversations you have in the hallway coming and going over issues and tight spots and advice. You just go down to your office, just keep a running Word document open, just document what time to the minute, 3.31 p.m., employee complained about this, I stated this and gave this, you know, counseling, uh, and you give the, the date and the time to the minute. Oh, it's clerical, it's boring, it's so not sexy, but it's got teeth. Okay, sports fans, this is a profit and loss statement. This is a P&L. You must insist that you see this P&L on the day that it comes out every month. My P&L usually came out on what? The 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, at least by the 15th from the previous month. So we could discuss where we were month to date, quarter to date, year to date, and then look at our forecasts for the future, right? P&L, you got a demand that you get it. You have to absolutely let everybody know, I want my P&L. Is the P&L out? Do we have the P&L? Who's got the P&L? Give me my P&L. You don't need to see food and beverage. You don't need to see engineering. You just need housekeeping.
because you're the executive housekeeper managing the money that they've entrusted to you. What does this have to do with training? It has everything to do with training because training takes time, labor, budget, right? And if you're not training or using that budget that has been budgeted for training, because the company knows you have to train, it's not productive work because it's, it's, they're, they're, they're working with other people. They're not on their own, grinding away, doing the things we need to do under a productivity factor. So you need to know what your training budget is because the training budget can be used for other things. It's just budgeted money. Always spend every dime they budget it. See, people think, oh, well, I'll save money. And a lot of companies, they want to save money. Why? So the executives can you know, end up with their numbers met at the end of the year. Why? So they can make sure they get their bonus. Okay, I get it. However, as long as you don't go over your budget, using your training budget, <laughs> you're gonna meet your numbers. Use your training budget in housekeeping. Use it for training, save it up. And then when you have an expense later in your labor, you'll accrue it to the training budget to keep your, product, your, your productive budget on track on budget cost per occupied room. Training budget is for training, but you're not always training. So you're accumulating hours. So if you go over, hey, let's not be seen over, let's take over and accrue it. Get to know your contract controller. They'll love you for this, accrue it to training. So your numbers wash out. All that matters at the end of the year is you come up flat zero, budgeted, spent, nothing over. I think that a company that lets you be under budget, they better make you explain every penny why you're under budget. Under budget is just uh, as bad of a mismanagement faux pas as over budget. Under budget? Why? Why are you under budget? Why aren't you using all the tools we gave you? Everybody's worried about over budget. Oh, I'm over. I'd be more concerned or just as concerned about under budget. That's mismanagement of your department. The company has assured you, you need this money to produce the product that we produce. Take care of your business on your end. The controller will love you. Come in and show him. This goes here, this goes there. Boom, all flat, we're good. Accrue this here. Accrue this there. If you're not managing money, you're not a manager. You might be a supervisor and that's fine, but you're not a manager. Man, you get paid for what you know about handling a lot of money. Count your beans before they count your beans. Keep a written record of your training hours and make sure you turn that in if you don't have a digital time clock. Make sure the comptroller knows this person, these hours, are accrued to that expense line. Digital time cards, punch in, punch out. Make sure that person's time code when he, when he or she is training is coded correctly so it automatically, for the comptroller, make sure it automatically accrues it to training and not regular productive hours and time. No surprises for comptroller. We should be on our game. Keep in mind what it was like when you were young and you were training and they threw you to the wolves. Just go with this person and tag along and blah, blah, blah. It's so frustrating. They leave, you don't know where they went. Now you gotta figure out what to do with yourself, blah, 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 blah. Don't throw trainees to the wolves. Assign them to a specific person that they will train with. Let's talk about housekeepers, just room attendants. Don't just, just pick a lady and throw some trainee you know, in with that lady and say, here, show this one how to do what you do. How do you know who should train? Is it your best room attendant, your best housekeeper? Nope. Many times it's not. Many times your best trainer can be a new person. Why? They still have in their heart the memory of what it's like to train. They'll be more conscientious, more understanding, more proactive, more encouraging to the trainer than even your senior room attendant. Plus, to be honest with you, many times, senior room attendants, pff, let me just do my thing. Trainees, slow me down. Fine. Put your new employee with another employee that is first the best natured, the best team player, the most positive, the most productive, doesn't matter. They can be new, they can be seasoned, senior, doesn't matter. Put them with the person that is going to 
impart their personality, their heart, their vibe, their positiveness. It's a great honor to be able to train another employee. A lot of times it's a great move to put them with somebody who's been there for four or five, six months. They're so thankful that they are in this work, that they are safe, that they are thankful that they have a, an organization that has prestige that they're working for. It's always agreeable, always complies. That's more important than your best housekeeper. Even if that person's room, sometimes that, uh, that's not the problem. We can fix, we can't fix heart, we can't fix nature, we can't fix team player if it's broken many times. Depend on the heart of the person to train them, who's going to impart a spirit and a culture to this individual. That's more important. We can fix toilets and hair on pillows and, you know, towels that aren't folded right. We can fix that. We can't fix somebody who's training with somebody that poisons them with complaints and bad attitude and anti-productivity. You get it. Okay, I'm going to go in deep here in just a minute on productivity. Productivity factors, rooms divided by hours. Okay, here's how you're gonna set up your housekeeping training with a room attendant. I'm just taking that particular position just because it's kind of the most, you know, productivity oriented, you know, expense affecting moment in all of your training. So if you have 13 rooms, divided by eight hours, you come up to a productivity factor of 1.625, I think it is. And when you take minutes divided by hours, you end up with about 33, 34 minutes per room per day. Now, if you put a trainee with a housekeeper that's doing 33 minutes per room, you have two people in the same room and wake up, executive housekeeper, it's not faster. Have you ever measured it? It's not faster for two people to do one room than it is for one person to do one room. Sometimes it's slower. So if this room attendant is doing 13 rooms in an eight hour day at about 33, 34 minutes per room, and you put a training person with them, here's what you do. You don't, you don't give them 13 rooms. You give them, let's say five more rooms, 18 rooms. Why? This lady that's doing 13 rooms now has help in the room so she can do more rooms, which makes her more productive when she's training or equally as productive. Okay, that's just the quick little skinny on that. When somebody comes into my department and they're a room attendant and I put them with somebody, here's what I want. First day, that training person, that person training only makes beds for eight hours. So with 15 rooms instead of, I'm sorry, 18 rooms instead of 13, which is five more than normal, that person training has all the ample time in the world to make 18 beds. After one day of nothing but bed making, beds are known to that trainee. That's day one. Day two, nothing but wet areas. Bathroom, if you have bathroom and kitchenette, that same thing. That person training only cleans bathrooms, only focuses on that, only does the little kitchenettes if you have that. But let's just take bathrooms. Only does bathrooms, 18 rooms in one day. She'll know her bathrooms. She puts in all the towels. She sets the, the uh, shower curtain. She does the bright work. She does everything. 18 rooms in one day, you're good. Third day, here's what that trainee does. Let's say, if you're doing a 13 room day, she'll get uh, eight rooms, maybe nine, where she does the whole room, but she's paired with a trainer. The trainer is given less rooms instead of 13. She's given, let's say 12. That way she has an hour of extra time. She still makes the same hours. She still has the same program. She has an hour to kind of go back and forth and assist this person training who's doing eight rooms and she's still on the training budget, which gives you eight rooms of productivity that you, that you wouldn't normally have with the lady doing 13. It, I don't have to, time to get into all the math, but it really, it really helps your productivity setting it up this way. In other words, you don't lose productivity 
because the balance of more with help, you know, less with this one picking up productivity, it, it's a wash. So once the person training has done a full day of beds, has done a full day of bathrooms or wet areas, right? And then the third day, that's where she's gonna pick up and get her hands in on vacuuming, right? Dusting, taking care of your artwork, getting all your placement of all your standards, ironing board, blah, 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 hangers, all that stuff. You know, anybody that owns a home or rents an apartment, they, you don't have to do a lot of training, you know, to, to teach them these basic, just everybody just picks up their house when, you know, the in-laws comes over and knows how to, you know, you, you get there fast. And then you just keep an eye on your person that's training that's now got her own paper in the morning. It's a little less rooms, right? Uh, it's going to affect your your budget just a little bit, but you're going to make it up later in the year. You're going to because you're managing money, and it's easy to if you're over and under, you'll make adjustments as you go along. It'll all be a wash at the end of the year. You always want to know your cost per occupied room and your productivity factors. And at the end of your annual fiscal budget, you want to be within five or ten cents of your budget and productivity factors for the whole years needs to be right in line, 33 minutes, 34, whatever it is per room for the whole year. So you gotta kind of juggle this a little bit and it's not hard, man. I could do it, it's easy. But at the end of the year, you don't wanna have productivity at 40 minutes per room because you didn't balance your productivity factors as you went along with your training. I think executive housekeepers, it should be mandatory. You explain why you're over on productivity. It's costing us more labor time to do what we've budgeted for. You should have to explain why you're underproductive, why your rooms divided by hours leaves you about 28 minutes per room and not 33 or 34, whatever's the standard. You should have to explain under budget. There should be a real short leash on under budget. The company thinks you need this budget to do the product, just saying. Now, I'm gonna throw in housemen real quick, the guys that take the linen and Terry up and down from the laundry. First day, they cross train in the laundry, the source of the fabric and material they're going to be moving around the hotel. They need to know what that laundry person goes through so they understand later when they're behind on, on materials that they need. They need to understand. First day, laundry, so they can learn to run the machines, cross training, back up, well-rounded employees. They need to know how to fold. Why? If we're running a little bit behind, they can come down, fold a bunch of stuff, and then take it up. We don't really depend on that but we cross train because it helps us if we get there. Second day, they're in the rooms. What are they doing? Same thing that the room attendant trained on, making beds and helping learn how to do a room. So they understand what the room attendant goes through and why they need materials, when they need them, what holds them up, what speeds them up, well-rounded employees cross tra training is huge. Third day, now they're with another houseman and they're just running houseman duties. They already understand the flow of the laundry. They already understand the flow of the, of the housekeepers. Running linen and Terry up and down, learning your closets, that sort of thing. Piece of cake, all right? And then they go on their own alongside somebody else who's helping them, right? So that's houseman in a general sense. Real quick, people that work in the laundry, training somebody new for the laundry. Okay, first day in rooms making beds. Second day, working with housemen. So they learn the material and how it's used, how it needs to ebb and flow and come and go on the floors with the room attendants. So they learn the whole process, how material comes down, how it's processed in the laundry, how does it get back up? Hey, what do we do with it when it gets back up into the rooms with the room attendants? And then the third day, they're working just in the laundry doing these things. That's just laundry and houseman in general. Now the most important thing for you to know about training. As the executive housekeeper, you are mentor, you are confidant, you are counselor, you're matriarchal, you're patriarchal. At the end of every day, for, certainly for the first week, every new person you have training, you should bring them down to the office, just you and them and a supervisor. Never meet with your staff alone. Always have a supervisor. Best practices. And you ask them, okay, today, what'd you do? What'd you do today? What did you learn? What did you see? What questions do you have? Is there anything that you think might be helpful in how we do things? You're a fresh eye. 
You have a new take on things. Maybe you have experienced from before. Give me feedback. Do you need any materials that you're not given? Is there something you just do not understand and you recognize it and you know it and nobody had an answer? Talk to me. You mentor them. And more importantly, you make sure at the end of, the, of every day, they know you know who they are, where they are, and what they're doing. You make sure they're fully aware you're all over this. And what they say, what they think, what they see, what they experience matters. You're the key factor as an executive housekeeper in hanging on and embracing and comforting these new people as they get on their way to full flight. You have to be very in tune with them. Things can go on up on the floors with new employees that you may or may not know of. It's a true fact that not everybody on your team is so happy there's new people there. Some people think new people means I'm going to lose hours. Some people think New people on staff mean I'm not going to get the overtime that I enjoyed for two weeks. There's a lot of politics of dancing, so to speak, that goes on in your community of housekeeping that aren't necessarily helpful to new people. You know this, you and I can talk, we can just be real here. Who makes sure that gets repaired and fixed and is made known? You, because you hang on to these people. Every day you check in, you hang on to them, you embrace them, you communicate with them, you make sure that they know that you know that they're watching and seeing and you're watching and seeing and that together you are communicators. And that, you know, then, then it's just the good people factor. It's important that you thank them. You're glad they're here. You've solved your, they've solved your problem of being short one or two people. They can express their thankfulness, that they're working, that you gave them simple employment, that they're glad to be here. Develop a relationship. Give them a bottle of water from underneath your desk. Would you like a bottle of water while we talk? Come on, be good people. We're handling a fabric. People are going to be the vehicle and the, and the avenue and the channel by which this type of entertainment, this form of show business that we're gonna put out to guests that come to the hotel, they're the ones that are going to do it. Handle the fabric of people with care, respect, professionalism, and just be good people, being good to good people. You'll be blessed. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com.